Um, good evening. I'd like to call to order the December 8th uh, UD, Urban Design Commission meeting. Uh, may we have the roll call, please? Mark Kimmerer? Here. Douglas Gasick? Here. James Doherty? Jim Sawhill? Here. Andrew Garcia? Here. Jeff Dinwiddie? Here. Thomas Tybor? Thank you. Next item of business is minutes. We don't have any minutes for approval tonight. That brings us to special order of business, executive sessions. The first item is disclosures. Do we have any disclosures on any of the cases tonight? Any disclosures? Evidently not. We'll move on to then our next order of business, which is recommendation of a UDC representative to the Public Arts Committee uh, and Art Selection Jury. Um, I believe you received a memo in the packet uh, for the case C2 where the Public Arts Committee and Jury Selection is requesting a, a, an appointment of a member from this board to that committee. Currently, James Doherty is serving on that committee as our representative and has expressed his issue, interest in continuing. And I'd like to also see if there's any other volunteers on the board, anybody else interested in serving on the Art Commission? I, I would volunteer if, if uh, James isn't able to do it. Um, well, I think, I think it's one of those we just need to figure out who's interested and then uh, basically vote on who we would like to be, uh, have as a serving member. So if you're, I am interested, you are yes. interested in, in serving on that committee, is there anybody else that's interested? Evidently not. That leaves us with uh, two candidates then, James and, uh, and Mark. And I guess we could, uh, I guess, do we vote? Do we take five votes to appoint somebody? <laughs> <laughs> do I get to vote? <laughs> <laughs> sure, you can vote for yourself, yeah. I'm a, I'm a little at a loss on how to proceed from here. Usually we have a motion for one thing only and not, not two persons running at this point. So. Should we wait for Jim to get back? Maybe he'll be back next uh, month and that way he might be willing to not run if, since he did it last time? Or, um, well, or I, think might... what we've, oh, sorry. I, I think what we've done in the past is just assign people to the different art selection committees, ha haven't we? Because right now I'm on the uh, Sand Lake Elementary School one and I think that's what we've done previously. You're talking about um, the different yeah, facilities. facilities we right. ju usually just put them up amongst members. Yeah, and see who volunteers. Yeah. Are they looking, Sharon, for just a member to, to be assigned to the committee over time, or are they looking for specific members for the, the two projects that are listed, the Fire Station 6 and Harry J. McDonald? Do they need a person for each? Or they yeah, they need one person for each, and it's a long, long process. There aren't that many meetings, but it, it takes a year or two years. Okay. Well, since we have two volunteers and two projects, <laughs> and you're here, Mark, which one do you want? Uh, the fire station would be fire fine. station. Sure. Okay. Um, so we'll have Mark assigned to the fire station and James to the Harry J. McDonald Center. Did James say? I mean, well, you you indicated that James was willing to serve. Should we check with him? I was I was indicating he wants to serve uh, on the public art committee to continue, um, but he didn't express any interest at all, and I I'm, any, I didn't pose the question projects. to him. Okay, I, I see what you're saying. <laughs> so then we have three issues in front of us. One is to be assigned to the committee, and then the other is to assign a member to each of these facility designs. Okay, I see. Um, and you are still interested, Mark, in serving on the committee? Yes. Is this time sensitive, Sharon? Can we wait next month? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think we could probably postpone it. Okay. I think we should under the circumstances. All right, that'd be great. Can I get a motion to postpone, please? It has been moved and seconded. I'm assuming there's no discussion. Uh, is there any objection to the motion? Seeing none, that passes. We deferred one issue. Is Perfect. there anyone who wants to volunteer to be on the Harry J. McDonald Center? Anyone live in, live in Eagle River? 
That's fine. Um, Jocelyn had somebody on our list uh, that was happy to be on that. If we don't have volunteers from the UDC, she has a, a list of people who could serve in UDC stead. Okay. No volunteers for McDonald? Evidently not, so we'll, we'll leave that one to someone else to take care of. Is that project even a go yet? It's this project not confirmed at this time, so I don't even know if there's anyone to appoint to it. Well, we have a memo asking us to appoint someone to that project, even though the project is not confirmed. So, And I think we'll leave it vacant at this point since we have no volunteers. All right, that brings us to our next order of business, which is our consent agenda. Um, and we don't have any consent agenda tonight, so that moves us on to unfinished business, our regular agenda. Um, before we start our regular agenda, um, I would like to give the petitioners the opportunity to postpone if they would like to. Um, currently, we have a short board. We have five-member board. A five-member body is determined based on the number of members present, less conflict of interest. To approve a case, it requires five positive votes of the body. For example, if the vote were four in favor and one against, the case would be denied. Um, when there is a short member board, postponement is offered to petitioner, and if accepted, the case will be postponed at the next available meeting date at no extra cost to the petitioner. So we have two cases tonight. Um, the first is the Municipality of Anchorage Roadway Design for Northern Light Sound Barrier. Would you like to go forward tonight? Um, could, you, could you please come forward? And State your name for the record. Um, my name is Rebecca Campbell, and I represent the city on uh, this project, and we are prepared to go forward with tonight. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and our next case in is the public hearing site plan review for the fire station. Would you like to come forward, state your name, and accept or deny? Yeah, Blaze Burkhart uh, with the design team. Um, in the one thing procedurally I'm not clear on, if we proceed and um, the case is denied, do we have an opportunity to get on the next agenda for the next meeting, or does? You mean if we hear the case tonight and it's denied? Yes. No, it's over at that point. The case would be, it's denied, the, case, the decision has been made. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that would mean we have to resubmit again for concept. No, you don't have to resubmit. We'll just hang on to our packets until the next meeting, if that's what you mean. If we proceed and don't prevail because of the short board, can we get on the next agenda to, to, to get into the, to the queue for that meeting for a resubmittal of the concept approval? Because it matters on this case with respect to time for um, the project schedule that we can't lose, say, two months on the back end. So you're saying if we if you proceed tonight and the UDC denies the case, why would you come back again next month? Well, um, presumably because we would have to come with, with another approach or submittal that is acceptable to the body. Um, it, if, if the design was radically different, um, yeah, if it's a substantial enough difference, then yes, we could hear the case again. All right, then I think we need to proceed. Okay. Okay, we have both cases going forward, so we'll call the first case. Uh, is case 2010-136, the applicant is Municipality of Anchorage. It's a site plan and landscape review for a public roadway. It's the preliminary site plan and landscape plan for the East Northern Lights Sound Barrier Phase 3, east of Rogers Park Elementary School, and the east line uh, to Drake Drive. Staff, may we have a presentation? Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. The purpose of the project is to construct the third phase of a sound barrier wall along a portion of Northern Lights Boulevard. The wall will range in height from 8 feet to 12 feet. Uh, there are trellises at the Princeton Way entry, and they are shown with two kiwi vines indicated. Kiwi vines previously planted for phase two have not grown due to lack of watering and maintenance. 
Staff spoke with the project landscape architect about possible substitutes that might do better, and we decided that planting three to four kiwi vines at each trellis would offer the best chances of success. The fence will be constructed with jogs to avoid damage to existing vegetation and to avoid utility conflicts. The height of the fence will also vary with the terrain stepping as needed to maintain a constant elevation relative to the elevation of Northern Lights Boulevard. In a conversation with the project engineer, she stated that the same care that went into selective tree removal for earlier phases will also occur for this phase of the project. Ms. Campbell indicated that all underbrush and trees smaller than four inch caliper located along the alignment will be removed. The landscape plan shows the addition of clusters of deciduous trees and shrubs fronting the wall. The project will reduce disturbance to trees on private property. The sound barrier wall will reduce noise levels in the neighborhood. Landscaping will be added at select locations to enhance the wall and lessen the impact. The design consultants continued the trellis element that was introduced in phase two of the project. The department recommends the four conditions for a review of site and landscape plan. Thank you. Are there any questions of staff? Um, I have one. Um, so this is phase three. So basically this the same wall design was, was built in the other couple of phases. Yes, that's right. And it's just a plain wood wall. Yeah, it's a cedar cedar wall. It's a sound barrier. It's it's uh, substantially constructed. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No. With that, I'll uh, excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Carson. Um, I had a question for staff, um, and I'm not an arborist, so I don't know. But if the kiwi plants didn't work on the first phase or the second phase, is planting three of them? I mean, if it was due to lack of water, is three plants or four going to absorb more water if there isn't water? I mean, is that a realistic or is there a different yeah. species that might be able to be planted? Um, through the chair, Mr. Garsha, um, yeah, Elise and I talked about it. Um, the thought was if there were more of them, then the likelihood of success, you know, maybe one or two out of the four would survive. Um, they do get water. But um, I think these will be closer. Uh, the water truck can more easily reach these because of where they're located. The ones that are planted now are kind of far back from the edge of the road. And they probably haven't been getting as much water as they should have those in phase two. So these aren't plants that can survive necessarily off the natural watershed of the area? Uh, no, it really just kind of depends on the summer, too. Okay. But once they're established, they should do fine just on rainfall. But it's that critical first two, three years. Okay. I just didn't know enough about the kiwi plant. So. Thank you. Any other questions of staff? I'll try to pay attention to the machine a little more. Um, with that, I would like to open the public hearing and ask the petitioner to come forward. Please state your name for the record, and you have 10 minutes. Um, my name is Rebecca Campbell, and I'm with CRW Engineering. I'm representing the uh, municipality on this project. And as uh, staff said, this is the third phase of a uh, project that's been going on since 2006. It was started with the community council uh, initiating the project. Um, they selected it based on, they selected the material for the wall. They selected the location for the wall based on input from UDC and also from other uh, the public, the local uh, local residents. Um, this is the final phase of the job and pending funding, hopefully in the uh, spring, we'll be able to build it this year if everything goes well. Um, like staff said in the past, we, uh, we've we laid out the wall and the plans for it, but it's um, fluctuates based on the on the vegetation out there. Our goal is not to cut down trees. Our goal is to preserve as much of the existing vegetation as possible. So when the project starts, we do change the alignment of the wall to save the uh, larger trees as well. And so if anybody has any questions. Thank you, Ms. Campbell. Are there any questions of the applicant? Evidently not. Seeing any head shaking, no one show up. Oh, Mr. Dinwiddie, sorry. 
Um, it, it's, it, it's cedar or wood, isn't it? That's correct. And it's painted. No, it's uh, it's just a um, a natural coating on it, a um, a preservative. It looked like phase one was painted for some reason. That was one of the questions I had: is whether or not um, why you cedar if you're going to paint it a solid color. It was not painted. Okay. They used a uh, an additional treatment on the second phase, so it looks a lot um, more natural. I think is the word for it. Was uh, um, obviously phase three. It's well past the time to ask this question, but was uh, a synthetic material um, just too cost prohibitive? Um, that was part of it, but it was also the uh, the community council and the local people really wanted a more natural uh, appearance to it, and so they were the, the ones that really were the driving force on the type of material on the wall. Any other questions of the applicant? Evidently not. Thank you. And since the uh, secretary has reminded me that this is not a public hearing, <laughs> we won't open it to the public for comment. Um, so with that, the matter rests with the board. Um, any other uh, questions of staff before we make a motion? Nope. All right. Can I have a, a positive motion, please? Yeah. Mr. Gasick, can you speak to your motion? Yeah, I move to approve case 2010-136, Concept Site and Landscape Plan Review for East Northern Lights Boulevard Sound Barrier Phase 3 with staff recommendations 1 through 4. Thank you. Mr. Kammerer, are you second? Um, would you like to go ahead and speak to your motion, Mr. Gasick? Yeah, I think this is a good continuation of the existing landscape that was already done in the previous phases. And I also find that it uh, lessens the noise impact to the neighborhood, really um, helping follow the goals of the comprehensive plan. And overall, it meets all the landscape design requirements that we review. Thank you, Mr. Kimmer. Do you have any additional findings? Um, I'll be supporting the motion. Uh, I don't see anything uh, that rebukes Title 21. It's a project we've seen a couple times before and a good one. It's been well received, so I'll be supporting Mr. Gasick's motion. Thank you. Any other board comments? Evidently not. Is there any objection to the motion? Seeing none, that motion passes unanimously. That brings us to our next case, which is case 10137. The applicant is the municipality of Anchorage. The request is for a site plan and landscape plan review of a public facility. Um, it's a preliminary site plan and landscape review for the east side fire station number six replacement. It's located in Chester Valley number six, lot 31A, block two, Alaska Village subdivision. Staff, may we have a presentation? Yes. <clears throat> the purpose of the project is to provide a new fire station to replace the existing building. Fire station six is beyond the original life expectancy. Replacement of this facility will allow for a bigger apparatus bay, drive through bay configuration, and enlarged living quarters. While no additional personnel are envisioned at this time, the new facility will have the capacity for the eventual addition of equipment and personnel to meet ever-expanding demands of the greater Muldoon area. Station six, 6 is currently home to two companies, Engine 6 and, and Medic 6. The station serves serve the second highest percentage of status 2 calls. Status 2 patients are considered stable with a high probability of becoming unstable. The project will meet LEED certification in accordance with municipal ordinance for public facilities. Public facilities. A bus stop is located on DeBar Road, and there is also one on Patterson Street next to the lot, um, on the lot adjacent to the fire station. I did want to um, 
make one modification to the conditions, which is on number four. If you flip over to page six, number four, the first sentence is construct a separated sidewalk on Patterson Street. Um, we should uh, delete separated and just uh, it's going to be a back of curb sidewalk. It turns out there, um, Lori Skanky, the trails coordinator, had um, asked for a separated sidewalk, but um, she and uh, Mr. Burkhart had discussed it, and um, she, Lori was informed that there are mature trees that would be impacted as, as well as, I think there's some utilities in the way. So they're going to do a back, five foot back of curb sidewalk there. And um, there's a sidewalk, as I just said, on the lot just south of the fire station. Um, and that uh, sidewalk will, uh, did I say sidewalk or bus stop? There's a bus stop on the lot just south of the um, fire station. And this sidewalk will go up to the property line. And then there's plans in the future to build, uh, continue that sidewalk. And anyway, this um, sidewalk will allow uh, bus users to get most of the way there on that side of the street via the sidewalk. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Are there any uh, questions of staff? Mr. Kimmer? Yes, sure. And I have a question about your uh, recommendation number four. I understand uh, removing separated. The last sentence says provide wheel stops to keep car bumpers from overhanging the sidewalk. Mm-hmm. Uh, I typically, when I think of that, I think of a parking area where a car will pull perpendicular to the sidewalk and the front bumper might hang over it. Do we have that condition here anywhere or is that a, this seems like it would be par parallel parking if any parking is even allowed on Patterson. I'm not sure if it is. Oh, I should have, actually I should have separated those conditions. The provide wheel stops actually should have probably been a, a number five. But um, it was referring to the parking lot itself, not on Patterson. Okay. So that would be the parking lot on the west side of the Right, because otherwise they, you know, pull up to the curb, but the bumper is still hanging over, and it lessens the width of that sidewalk there. Okay. Thank you. Um, as, as a follow-up to, to that question, if you go to, to condition number four, um, where it, it starts, with ensure mm -hmm. that, that sentence, should we move all of that to a condition number five? We could. It would be clear. It out, yeah. It more clear. That, that would be fine. Thank you. Are there any other questions of staff? Evidently not. I'll ask the petitioner to please come forward. State your name for the record. And you have ten minutes. Yes, hi, Blaze Burkhart, uh, Principal Architect of Burkhart Croft Architects, um, Architects for the project. Um, I think most of the the packet is um, is fairly straightforward. Um, overall area of the site, the project's next to Baggage Middle School in the zone right above the track. Um, the early site studies and discussions with the community. Um, involved the Walmart development and understanding its implications to our site. The fact that that project will add a control intersection um, to Patterson, incorporate some medians along the bar, and start to dictate, you know, the ability for the apparatus to come and go from the site. The planning for the DeBar Road improvements specifically were, were um, had taken into account the traffic from the fire station and encouraged the, the routing um, for deployment side to capture Patterson as the as the predominant way to do that. In order to make that really work then, um, we're incorporating the existing site into the into the design that was not intended initially. We're hoping to, to be able to come and go from the, the uh, main site above Begich. Um, this that you have in the package just kind of shows how the, the traffic flow requirements for the school um, keep keep zone you know, it's already set up pretty well for zoning of school traffic between bus Drop off staff. We needed to do the same thing with our um, with our station design so that we could 
uh, truly accommodate drive-through bays, which is a, a, a big thing lacking in the current station's layout. So the idea was, all right, how do we configure a station that does a lot of things from a site perspective all in one? Um, one is to um, get the apparatus bays deployed to Patterson, um, return on DeBar for the write-in only, uh, keep that well separated from the school traffic, do it in a fashion that keeps all the, the um, open area requirements for the lead certification and reserve as much as possible the land to the east side of that parcel because the, the um, public facility site plan for the school piece had a reservation um, to keep a part of that parcel for a potential future community center. So in putting that all together, um, we've come up with, with this site arrangement, um, the drive-through bays at, at one time, and I think in, in the, one of the community council members' comments that you got tonight, you know, there was discussion about flipping the design so that the, the living quarter side of the building, which is the, the, the shorter or the skinnier version of the L here, um, would be on the south side more removed from the traffic for noise control reasons. We actually had a design that, you know, before some of this traffic flow stuff was known that tried to, to do that very thing. Um, to flip it in its, and, and keep the apparatus traffic going in an east-west direction would not only um, compromise the turning radius to be able to get in and out, but it and essentially, I think, is, is a contrary site design strategy because it, it it fronts the street with the back door, back of house activities of, of the fire station, fueling stations, dumpsters, training activities, and so forth. The back, the back apparatus bay apron is used for a variety of, of activities that are property shielded from the road, if you will. We did have discussions at, at great length with the, the fire department personnel about the implications to the you know, dorm rooms and noise along DeBar Road, and it incorporated wall assemblies and and treatment to mitigate that concern. Um, the station is pushed as far back to the east side as is necessary to get the turning radiuses out for the, the four bays, um, maximize the area then to, to the east for the future community center site and get the free area that we need for lead certification. Um, in doing that, it also, it, it, it has a bit of a, of a dichotomy to it, if you will, in that um, removing the front door from, that far from Patterson, you know, kind of removes its public face, but at the same time, it enhances the privacy of the residences next door by not having a much larger building. This building is, is uh, four times the size of the current station. There are six people manned in the station at any given time. This station is designed for a capacity of 14. So the, some of the issues in the community council report that you got about future ladder trucks and so forth, this station is designed to handle them. Um, so then the, the landscape scheme is basically trying to take that dichotomy and pull everything together in a unified way. Um, and make as many pedestrian connection points as we can along the way. There is a lot of bus use in this area. Um, right now there is a, a trail along DeBar Road. We wanted to soften that trail a bit instead of just having it linear. So it has a bit of a serpentine form. That has, has the need to get a little more rigid um, over time just because of some oh, utility pull boxes and so forth that are in the easements that we need to miss. Um, but the general uh, idea is to preserve the mature growth that's primarily in the northwest corner of the site, supplement it with new plantings, um, and make the connections from the bus stop to the to the uh, apparatus bay, or sorry, to the to the fire station's main public entry. Create a bit of a plaza at that location. There's a bike rack that is not just um, in response to the lead certification. There are actually two firefighters between the three shifts now that do ride their bikes every day. This gives them the option to use bus connectivity with their bikes if, if they choose. Um, and uh, as much as possible, we tried to push as many of the, of the required parking spaces to the back side so that we could um, widen the, the depth of planted area along, along the bar and then at the end, of, or sorry, the end of Patterson. And then at the end of this sidewalk that borders our parking, 
is where we're hoping to create a bit of a flag plaza to kind of tie the whole site arrangement together. The um, plans you have, this is just showing the uh, some of the refinements that have taken place since then. It's it's basically the same as what you've seen, just a little tighter and informed by you know real efforts of structural layout and so forth. Two-story scheme. Um, the living quarters primarily above the support spaces for the station activities below that and the apparatus bay kind of binding them so that we're trying to, to zone the station in addition to the to the site appropriately but always mindful of response time in the process when we put all that together um, one of the comments that we've gotten recently from council meetings is the issue of of color and i actually agreed with them um, you know we, our, our office does our work in a pretty collaborative way so we kind of give people some license to stretch their wings in a way or whatever and the colors that were being selected I personally had a bit of a problem with as well they seemed a little too gray for our, for our environment um, so the council hasn't seen these yet but I worked on these in anticipation for this building and try to bring a little more bright vibrant color the body of the station you see is actually uh, kind of a uh, tan linen um, textured tile it's uh, it's the same tile of two that is used on Clark Middle School right now um, what we had before was kind of a charcoal gray metal siding for the higher component that's the part that didn't feel right um, this kind of rounds it out the, the the corner piece that says FS6 is a is a, a it's actually a, an idea we had gotten from another station as a way to, to make maybe an LED backlit, you know, icon component holding the corner. The council felt real strongly at our last meeting to incorporate the word Muldoon somehow in the title and specifically along Debar Road so that it was visible, you know, to passing traffic. So this is a first pass at, you know, what that might be. Also standoff lettering. Um, I guess the... Uh, the point that Sharon was talking about, Lori Skanky's comment on the, the sidewalk along Patterson. Directly, I don't know, know if I can point here or not, but in this location right here by Mr. Uh, by Mr. Edwards' property line, there is a, an existing bus stop for two lines. The larger bus stop that has significantly more lines is here, and then there's you know easily six routes you can gain over at the current community center. We actually had discussed the notion of carrying the sidewalk around the corner at one point. We had it in, we had it out. And primarily our rationale for um, taking it out was that we, short of that bus stop, we weren't really connecting to anything of, of significance. Well, Lori's point was is that in 2007, there was apparently a modification to the trail's goals that um, I couldn't find when we were doing our research that was suggesting that Patterson Street be a target for, you know, um, sidewalk improvements down the road. My question to her was, how are we going to accomplish that because we don't have any right of way? And what she's trying to do is encourage, through the DOT and you know AMAT's process, I would assume, a road narrowing um, you know effort that would provide the sidewalk space in the current right of way. So, what we thought made sense is to instead of back of curb where we're dying this thing into basically the fence on a property line, keep it out at the face of the street so that the future sidewalks can terminate nicely into this bus stop and it seemed like a better connectivity. Do you have anything else to present tonight? Um, I, I guess I can respond to the comments on the um, from Easy Phillips, if yes, you, if you have interest there. That's going to be one of my questions. Okay. Have um, have we have had five um, meetings with the council so far. Um, Ainsley's brought these, you know, feel strongly about these comments, and I respect that. Many of them don't have much to do with our facility design, like whether Muldoon should have a ladder truck. Uh, there's not a whole lot we can do with that with that comment, other than say our station design is accommodating a ladder truck should one ever be deployed to, to Muldoon. Um, other comments about the building aesthetic and, and colors and so forth. They're in a they're in a state of uh, you know of process and we're we're listening and responding to them accordingly. Um, you know the the work is hardly finished. I guess the uh, 
You don't have a formal resolution from the group. I have asked. This, this is a very cautious group for very good reasons. Um, we've gotten positive feedback from everybody that we've talked to, except that Ainsley has concerns. Um, there, the secretary is here today and is telling me, you know, that in terms of the colors and the building aesthetic, that's not necessarily just Ainsley. That's fine. We, we understand that, and we'll continue to work with that. Um, but th I guess the only thing that I would say with respect to um, the words in the letter, so to speak, is the use of the word we, because I don't think what you're reading is, is indicative of the broader community council's attitude. Um, Mo, you know, the people that have come up to me individually love what they see. If there's individual issues that we can still hit on, we're, hey, we're, we're fine to do that. Okay. I, well, I, I guess I have a, a couple questions for you on Ainsley's comments as long as sure. we're, we're on that at this point. Um, and she, I'm trying to come through, she has five comments. Um, the first one is on some general design issues that I don't think is before us. Her second comment is all landscape, all landscaping shall be nursery grown, four inch caliper. Um, is, is, could you respond to that issue specifically? Well, Ralph Prince is here and we should probably have him respond to the caliper piece. I think the nursery grown stock thing is certainly not an issue. Okay. Uh, my name is Ralph Prince. I'm one of the municipal landscape architects. Um, her first comment, all landscaping should be nursery grown, that's pretty standard for a lot of municipal projects, so I have no problem with that. Four-inch caliper trees, um, I do have a problem with that, I, as I think most arborists would in this climate. Um, generally, three inches is about as uh, a large a tree as we, as we specify up here. Once in a while, three and a half, but I can't think of any four-inch caliper uh, or pr projects that have specified four-inch caliper trees. And that's kind of a general comment because I, I think certain trees like uh, um, the crab trees, not that we've got some of those yet on, on our project, but would be very difficult to get in that size anyway. Um, I really can't comment on the salvage docks at Begich Middle School. That was not, that was not part of that project. Saving the existing mature trees as a priority is, is something we're doing. And you can see, um, well, I don't know if you can see, but we're saving them along Debar, and we're saving them on Patterson as well. From about, oh, well, actually from about the corner of our Apparatus Bay return in, in the westerly direction, that is primarily mature tree growth. There are some cottonwoods mixed in it, and we would probably not keep those. Um, but, but the major mature trees in this area are shown to, to be retained. And then we were hoping to avoid having to take out three pretty nice trees in this area, but the effort to get everything on there isn't going to make that possible. Okay, thank you. And, and that covers the caliper. And then you've already covered item number three, the design uh, constraints or design concerns. Uh, four, traffic noise, you've covered that. And uh, five is signage, and I think you've covered that issue too. So I think, I think we've gotten your responses to... Uh, to these additional issues from, from Ainsley. Uh, to, to be fair, um, also to Ainsley's last point on the on the corner signage piece similar to the elementary school, that's an idea that she brought up that, that makes perfect sense to me, and that is part of this trying to hold things together, you know, on the depth of this site. She's in, encouraging us to consider some kind of radius monument sign, similar to what they have at Baggage, but, you know, smaller scale. And actually one of the firefighters from the station um, who we've also met with several times, by the way, um, has suggested that something, you know, dynamic like that as a corner holder might be an appropriate um, deal, you know, for this thing. And I suggested, because that was a 1% for art, um, you know, commission, that perhaps that wouldn't be a bad thing to focus the 1% art uh, jury on. And we have made the, the uh, call to Jocelyn to get that process started because we'd like to be, have it be a more cohesive part of the, of the process. Thank you. Um, Mr. Dinwiddie. Um, I've got a, a handful of questions. First of all, um, there's speculation that uh, Sam's and Walmart are not going to get built. How does that affect your, uh, your plan? 
Um, that's a speculation I haven't heard. I've, I've heard speculation about when, um, that it's not going to be imminent. Um, I don't know that it necessarily changes anything because it, it's not a bad thing for the station to capture Patterson as its as its remote, you know, as its main throw. I think what you'll find is Walmart or not, DOT is going to support a, a light at that intersection at some point. Right now in the plan, Walmart has to put it in. Everything I'm talking about from medians and all, all that, it's not a state DOT project doing that. It's Walmart doing it. Would the city have to put it in if Walmart chooses to build elsewhere? I, I think it would become a requirement of DOT at some point. There, there's supposed to be a paving upgrade of uh, DeBar Road its whole length next summer. And I would imagine just, uh, I mean, I'm not going to speak for Scott, but I would imagine that if if there was a reality known now that um, that Walmart wasn't going to happen, he, he might want to add that component as part of that project. But feels pretty strongly about it. But it doesn't change your ability to get the fire trucks out or anything like that. It has no traffic concerns whatsoever. No, I think the only thing that the Walmart plan, one way or another, does to us, not knowing when it might happen, is what we do temporarily. That's a piece of this that I didn't mention. The other part of the site development is we need to organize things so we can build a new station, keep the other one operational, move the guys into it, then do demo of the, of the current station. That means the new station has to operate as a back-end station only for a while out the, out the return side. So if they, right now they could go out the return side and do a left turn. If they got going on the road improvements and the median was there, they could not do that. If that materializes, we'll put a temporary access road over to the baggage access road where they can't. So I think the only impact would have been during our construction activities, not, not changing much after the fact. Do you have an idea how, on a tree count how many trees can be relocated? Because I think there was, I know on just on the other side of the driveway there was a a berm of birch trees that the school district, uh, they're taller, larger caliper trees that run along the bar, but I'm not sure if the berm ends at the first entryway to, on or if it continued down into the natural vegetation. But how many trees are actually there that can be relocated and reused on the site? There are nine uh, green spruce that can be reused. They're about seven, eight foot. Were there any big birch trees that are, you uh, know? We're going to look at them again in the spring. They don't look that great right now. But, but there was, there, I, maybe that berm that, uh, that maybe it, it might be on the other, just a little bit east of uh, this parcel. I think that the school district had to do some mitigation that was off-site, but it was along Dubar. And there is a, a berm back in the middle area here. Um, yeah, deeper on the side, but straight up in front on the bar edge is all the, the lower growth stuff that was put in with the school project. And then the other uh, comment, uh, uh, speaking in, and Lee ends the Ansley's comments. Um, one of the things that uh, um, the concern was is that the one third ratio is is fairly substantial for them, and uh, and, and it makes sense because. You know, if you caliper up birch trees in this town, generally all they're doing is going to get forest grown trees that the branches don't start until, you know, 10, 11, 12 feet tall, and then you get these lollipop looking trees that, that, uh, and, and I think that's what the community council wants to stay away from is, is they want trees that are relatively well limbed for the height that they're supposed to be and, and, you know, basically in nursery spec, uh, ANSI specs require that, you know, if you have a, a three inch caliper tree, it shouldn't be more than 16, 17 foot tall for a deciduous tree and it should, the limbing should start at four or five feet tall and it should be pretty full. I think that, that in your description of your landscape plan, you should basically, you know, I would recommend that, uh, as part of our, us plan that, that you, you give some detail as to how those trees are going to be graded and what kind of, it basically address some of her concerns in, in your, requirements for nursery grown. I, I think Ralph can kind of... Yeah, and I, I think you might realize that I usually do that on my project. We have pretty strict requirements on tree shape and branching. I, I agree, but at the same time, you know, uh, uh, Elise designed Malden Middle School and she her stamps on this one, and uh, and I think that that's exactly... And, and 
granted, we built Muldoon, so I, I understand the whole concern. I understand the seller stick uh, concept, and I know why it happened. And, and I think that if you, if you go along with what Annalise uh, is, is saying, that I don't think that'll happen again. I, I mean, large, I'm, I, I tend to, I don't think four inch caliper trees are unrealistic to plant here. I think that, that it would be a better move for the city to go with larger trees and fewer trees. You know, you don't have to put, four, if you, if you plant a four inch caliper tree that's a nursery grown tree, you, you can plant them further apart because they're more mature and, and, uh, I think that you could actually in, end up reducing your cost of your landscaping by going with larger trees and, and, you know, typically all up and down the west coast and other cold climates they do that and, uh, you know, I, I would strongly recommend you go with the largest plant material you can afford and, and, uh, and go from that standpoint, you know, because, uh, there's something to be said about, uh, a good looking project, you know, that there's, there's lots of trees at the museum that are four to six inch caliper that are, uh, that are all large caliper trees and, and they're limbed fully, so I, I think it's possible, quite possible. And then the, the curb stops, uh, they're a nightmare for snow removal. Uh, they add costs to shoveling. Uh, granted, they, I, I agree about not parking on the, uh, pulling your car all the way up to the, where your wheels hit the sidewalk, but at the same time, if you have to shovel, the difference between shoveling the sidewalk and shoveling around curb stops and loader snow removal, the fire stations hire contractors to do snow removal and, and, you know, you're gonna end up with those all busted up. Uh, the loaders hit them, pile trucks hit them. It's, it's one of those things where, uh, when you have a, a public bid for snow removal, you end up getting a low cost snow removal and, and bumper stops are, are impediment to snow. As soon as it snows six inches, you can't see them and inevitably if you run a front end loader in there, you're going to bust them up and I'd recommend that they get removed, but that's just me. Well, just to clarify, since we've made the submittal, that front parking lot, um, accessed off Patterson is, uh, curb. There's a curb there now, so that'll take care of that. And, and that's um, our intention all along was we would have wheel stops on the back lot because there's no curb there, but we wouldn't recommend putting them on the front lot either for exactly the reasons that you're saying. Thank you, Mr. Kimmer. Yes, uh, just a couple questions. One, the bus stops, have the, has the design been shared with transit yet? and to decide what kind of amenities. I know usually amenities are based on ridership, and I'm curious if lighting, uh, benches, that sort of thing, are intended to be included at the bus stop uh, along DeBar or perhaps on Patterson. No, we haven't. The one on Patterson is nothing but a sign. Um, the one on DeBar is a little more defined, um, but no, we haven't had direct communications with transit as to the plan. Um, that's something we can do before final, I would think. Yeah, I, I highly recommend it. Usually uh, lighting, there's some new design standards. They're not really new, but just uh, best practice for amenities, lighting, uh, how the bus stop should work in relation to the bus door, et cetera. And it uh, looks like you have plenty of room. Uh, my other question would be... Uh, Future expansion, one of Ainsley's questions, I guess the first one, will it? Will the fire station have four bays? Obviously it, it does. Are we looking at, is it well, a future expansion? I, I, I should clarify, and I should have done that with the expansion piece. There's two issues going on here. One is additive alternate, and one is future expansion. I mentioned that the station is designed to eventually accommodate 14 people. The common spaces are fully built out now. We're only building 10 dorm rooms. The expansion for the other four is planned to go in this zone right here. Um, that site plan shows four bays for many reasons, budget control, the fact that, you know, contracts always have alternate structures in them, et cetera. One of our alternates, and it's the first priority, is base bid is three bays, and um, alternate one is the fourth bay. Keep in mind that even the base bid of three bays will have one spare bay from the day this thing opens. There's only two bays on, you know, two apparatus units assigned to the station now. So it does look into the future now, yes. the design does. Okay, thank you. Uh, one last question. I think the design criteria manual requires that uh, landscape plantings be set back a minimum of seven feet from the back of curb. So I'm curious about uh, thoughts on the survivability of the shrubs that are look like they're right at the back of curb. 
Uh, I love the idea of a separated sidewalk with some plants in between to create a safer pedestrian uh, feel. And I believe the design criteria manual requires that for maintenance. So when snow piles up there, it doesn't basically kill everything that's that's in the way. And I, um, the plan up, up on the board, I think the closest tree is 10 or okay. 12 feet. I'm sorry. I was looking at this plan. That yeah, we've, we've changed it since then. So. Okay, I yes. will draw that question then. Thank you. That's all I have. Mr. Garcia. Um, the first question I had also sort of relates to the bus stop, and that's um, I actually live in this neighborhood, so I know that the par gets really backed up pretty bad in that left lane as people are trying to turn left on Muldoon to get to the highway because that's a main east-west corridor. So if that bus stop, is there any chance that there's able to be a pullout for that bus stop? Because I can just see that. I know there's the light at the Alaska USA, but now there's going to be another light. So I can just see that left lane getting backed up terribly, and then people aren't able to get by on the right lane because now there's a bus stop in the middle of the only other lane. Well, the bus stop exists. Oh, I know it exists. I'm just thinking, I mean, you've got future, assuming the Walmart happens, you're going to be getting all that extra traffic. I'm just concerned about additional traffic and car loading at peak times and even non-peak times and what kind of impact that would have. Um, well, I, I'm not sure. I, I haven't seen anything in the plan for, from the Walmart end that um, is making any significant changes to that side of the road. Okay. Because I um, didn't know that when they did all the Muldoon Road improvements, they made the bus pullouts on Muldoon, so they pulled over on the side, and then the one at Fred Myers is the spot for the bus to pull out, so it's not impacting traffic flow. And I was just wondering, I mean, if, if you're upgrading the site, it just would make sense to me that you'd take sort of traffic patterns into consideration. And, and it looks like there's, there will be easement space for that to actually be possible. I'm not citing that as a condition by any means, but I'm just saying that's something you might want to consider. Well, we can certainly talk to Scott Thomas about it, but uh, we don't envision our project moving into road improvements on the bar. Okay. I'm just looking at upgrading yeah. the bus stop since they upgraded all the other ones. But, right. but your yeah. point is, is well made that it's not, you know, it's not a bad thing to bring to his attention and see what he's, because he's, he has invested a, a lot of study into the traffic flows post Walmart and so forth in this area and that's where we got a lot of our feedback you know in, in terms of placing the design we have we can talk to him about what his thoughts are on that stop okay and if we talk to transit as well I mean they may have a longer term plan for moving that stop I don't know yeah can I, I just I know there's room there for it to happen with the you know when you demo the existing one that there'd be room personally I mean now that you bring this up I kind of wonder if this is a, a bit of a concession we made as well that I didn't mention. But you see how we're sort of tapering off coming into here? That's the beginning of the deceleration lane that hits baggage. And as part of our study, we actually camped out there before school and after school because I, I was initially concerned with what the backup might do there toward apparatus getting in and out. And that thing is, and Scott agrees, it's extremely long. It's much longer than it needs to be. There's never anybody queued in it at all during those peak loads because they get down into the other road pretty quickly. The bus stop might be better located back into that where the bus can pull out and there's still enough deceleration lane on the other side and we could still provide connectivity to it. That might be the best answer to that, to that issue, frankly. Yeah, I mean, it's just something I wanted to bring up. And then the other item I had was the, uh, the trail. Um, let me see. So basically everything east of Boniface, there's no access to the trail systems per se, like um, in other parts of town. And uh, I have little kids, so I always have to pull them in a trailer. And it is really a scary thing to try to get from Muldoon over towards the Patterson area where you can get into a neighborhood. I was wondering if there was any chance that you can maintain that trail. Um, you mean the cut through the trail that people yeah. have made? Yeah. Um, maybe. It's well used, and we, we had a lot of trouble figuring out who's going where. Um, we might be able to. It's to basically, people trying to get away from the back of the curb on the bar and all the crazy traffic there. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, we're, we are really tight on this site for the, the best place to do it for what you're talking about is on the north or on the south side, 
But, you know, now you're snaking around fences to Mr. Edwards' place. No, that, I understand. Um, but, you know, one thing that's also worth mentioning in that respect is there's a lot of, we've, we've spent time talking to baggage as well. And um, we had a little debate about, do you guys want to fence this separation? And they really don't. They, they envision this station as part of, you know, their campus and want to see it open and firefighters, you know, doing their thing in the back, back lot. So a trail could meander kind of here and there. I would think if we could figure out how to get to Patterson at the end of it. Okay. That's just it. And I wanted to say I can approve of Jeff's comment about the wheel stops. I'm, they're terrible for snow removals. And I also agree those shouldn't be a requirement or condition. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Ms. Ferguson? Yes, I just wanted to um, speak a little bit more about um, – the bus stop in terms of having a pull off versus not having a pull off in a lot of previous projects road projects we've looked at there are bus stops and this issue has come up before and people mover prefer not to have pull offs especially on busy roads because once they pull off they can never get back into traffic it takes a long long time and it they're, they they messes up their whole schedule they're now way behind um, and so it's their, their preference just to stop right on the road. Yes, it does back up traffic, um, but otherwise they can't maintain their schedule. And that's why they're loath to use uh, pull-offs, especially on a busy road, because they can't get back on. Are there any other questions of the applicant? Are there any other questions? Apparently not. Thank you. With that, the matter rests with the board. Mr. Chair, can I mention one thing? Mm -hmm. um, about the um, wheel stops in the parking lot, it's e either wheel stops have to be provided or the, walk or the sidewalk that adjoins it has to be wider. I mean, we have to have a maintain, a, you know, at least a four-foot wide space to walk. And if it's only, what, a five-foot wide sidewalk, do we know yet? It's six. Okay, so it might be okay at four feet then. And I would just throw out there, I mean, we, we try to accommodate that kind of thinking, but every inch we take away from green space is hitting our lead, <laughs> our lead free area, so it's, it's really tight. You can use pavers. Yeah, I was just going <laughs> to say. So I guess to, to follow up your, your comment on the, the sidewalk width, does, does that change the condition of approval? They're coming back for, you know, final approval. If, in fact, the sidewalk's six feet wide, then it shouldn't be a problem. Okay. Sounds good. May I have a positive motion, please? Mr. Dinwiddie, can we have a second? And a second. Mr. Dinwiddie, can you speak to your motion? Make your motion, I should say. I'd like to make a motion that we approve uh, recommendations uh, one through three with amendment to four to drop the, the car bumpers um, with the comments from Sharon that they come back with the revised sidewalk. Uh, I make a route. That's the recommendation that we approve. The staff recommendation. Did you get that? <laughs> <laughs> I think the secretary would like you to to, to clarify your. I, I'm sorry. I just had one question because in the beginning they talked about splitting number four into a number five, starting with the word insure. Were you still going to do that? We don't have to. I think okay. it clarifies it a little more, but I think we'll we'll get through it as stated. Um, I understand. And and you were clear on the uh, modifications to uh, number four. That's Madam correct. Secretary. And uh, okay. in addition, um, add a board recommendation for large caliper nursery grown plant material. So that would be condition number five? That's correct. Can you define large? Three inch plus. 
Yeah, that's a good idea. That's probably what we should do is three-inch caliper. Three-inch caliper, nursery-grown? That's correct. For deciduous, obviously. <laughs> well, I don't think it's obvious. <laughs> well, for deciduous, we'll add that too. For deciduous trees. Thank you, Mr. Dinwiddie. We have a second for Mr. Kimmer. Um, Mr. Dinwiddie, would you like to speak to the motion? Findings? Uh, I, uh, I think that this uh, project definitely meets Title 21 in respect to community planning. Um, it takes into account uh, the use of the public spaces, um, the landscaping along Debar, uh, adds a uh, pedestrian traffic as well as uh, uh, the bus stop connectivity. Uh, I like the fact that they uh, are uh, working on a lead project and I recommend that we support. Thank you. Mr. Kimmer, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, <clears throat> I'll be supporting the motion. Uh, I am a little concerned about the uh, new recommendation about uh, minimum three inches for deciduous minimum three inch caliper for deciduous trees. Uh, I believe uh, it's stated on the plans they're going for a native look. Uh, I think a, a variety of sizes can achieve that appearance better than uh, than all large trees. Uh, I, I guess I would like to uh, see what the design team brings back for their final submittal and uh, tackle that recommendation then. Uh, so as a, I guess I would ask that it be uh, removed and, and just kind of a friendly uh, suggestion made to the petitioner that they look at larger caliper sized trees. I guess we have two op options, Mr. Kimmer. We can, we can modify the condition uh, to soften it or we can remove it, but either one of those is going to take a motion from you. Uh, I move that uh, the recommendation number five be changed to uh, inch and a half to three inch caliper deciduous trees, nursery grown. So that was an inch and a half to two inch, you said? Three inch. To three inch. Thank you. Is there a second for that motion to amend? There's a second for Mr. Garcia. Um, would you like to speak further to that amendment? I, I don't think so. Uh, I, I think I'm making a good point. I think I'm helping the design team have a little more creativity as they move this forward. They've certainly done a good job at uh, addressing everything uh, from the public comments, and I trust that uh, you know the project's going to look great. And I think uh, making all the trees three inch minimum for deciduous would be uh, might be a cost issue. It might uh, limit the, the trees that they put in there, and it might limit the uh, aesthetic that they're going for. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. Would you like to speak to the amendment to the motion? I feel what Mr. Kimmer is adding is very reasonable. It allows the design team you know, the ability to use creative means to create the product they're looking for. And I Thank you. I support it. Is there objection to the amendment to the motion? Uh, I don't object, <laughs> but I, I would like to make a strong recommendation that that part of the pushback from the community council is that that the the moose destroyed Bigot because they had two inch caliper trees spec on the plan. We planted two inch caliper trees per plan. We followed the the plan exactly, and the moose and we even used three different coats of uh, plant skid and the moose absolutely ravaged that school and there is something to be said about design creativity but think outside the box and and I, I'm with Mark Wallace on the the it's a small footprint this is a small project to landscape come back with something really creative and take into consideration what's there and and you know we'll deal with it at the next set of plans but uh, 
you know, inch and a half caliper trees are, are moose lollipops, and and they're cheap, but they're cheap for a reason. They're just uh, I've planted thousands of trees in this town, and and inch and a half trees just don't work. And uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll I won't hold up the the, the process here, but uh, let my comments be known that if it comes back with lots of inch and a half trees, I might not be so, so supportive next time around. Seeing uh, reluctance, acceptance of the amendment, the amendment uh, passes. We're now back to the main motion. Is there any additional discussion on the main motion? Uh, any further amendments to the motion? Seeing no objection, the main motion passes. Congratulations, you made it through a short board. That brings us to our next item of business, which is case 2010-144, uh, ordinance amending t AMC Title IV regarding land use boards and commissions, supplemental procedures, qualifications of members, and deleting various sections. I see Ms. McConnell's here. Would you care to make a presentation? I'll keep it brief. Uh, good evening. My name is Erica McConnell. I'm with the Long Range uh, section of the planning division uh, of the municipality. The ordinance before you um, consolidates and standardizes the procedures of the various land use boards and commissions, removes them from the code of regulations, and places them into Title IV. Um, they were originally moved. Uh, from the Code of Regulations into Chapter 2 of the Title 21 Rewrite, so they may look familiar as, as I know this body has reviewed that chapter years ago at this point. Um, but we were requested by the Assembly to move, uh, to move these into Title 4, which we are doing through this ordinance. Um, I don't need any official action from you. We're bringing it as an informational item. I'm happy to take any comments or suggestions you have. Um, and, you know, propose modifications, but I, I don't need an, a motion or a resolution or, or anything like that. And I'm available to answer questions. Thank you. Are there any questions of Ms. McConnell? Looks like we're going to let you off easy tonight. I, I guess my only comment, in, in my review of it, it looks like our procedures stay the same. Nothing really changes except the location and the code. Is that correct? That's generally the case. Um, there's a minor change. Well, I guess some people may think it minor, some people may not. But on the whole appeal process, um, back when I think it was Fred Bonas was the municipal attorney. He did a he did a very complicated change to the code that had a seven day process about when a case was final or not. And he made it really kind of complicated and confusing. And we've simplified it to say the the um, appeal period begins on the day that the department mails out the signed either resolution in most cases or the um, signed um, the planning board doesn't do resolutions. They do summaries of action, um, and that's when the appeal period starts. So we've kind of simplified that a little bit. So that's really the only uh, significant change. But yeah, everything else is pretty much the same. Okay. Thank you. Um, still no questions of staff. I guess I will thank you for your presentation and, and sharing your ordinance with us. And you thank can you. Go back with no comments from the board. All right. Um, our next item of business is we have no public hearings or appearance requests. That brings us to reports. Um, the chair has no report. Um, Ms. Ferguson, do you have anything to share with us tonight? No, Mr. Chair, I don't. Okay. Any other board comments? Jill, do you have anything for us? <laughs> How's your arm? <laughs> I, I have a quick question. Okay. Uh, I was going to see how the search for other commissioners is going. Yeah, well, um, <clears throat> some of the other boards and commissions were, have been um, recently filled, 
So there's hope that sometime in the not too distant future they'll get around to the UDC and filling the two vacancies we have now. But um, hopefully we'll hear something next month. If not, we'll have to bang them over the head. Any good rumors? <laughs> no, no, nothing, nothing definite. We, the, in January, we'll have a deputy director. Is that, you know, sort of the new planning director? Because the planning director we've had now is his position has been elevated. Okay. So that planning director off, you know, office is uh, vacant, but it should, it's supposed to be filled in January. Okay. Have, have, have recommendations for board members been sent? I've them? sent some. No guarantee that they're going to consider them, but I've sent some, yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. We're, it's good to send good people forward and yeah. hope. So that's great. Um, any other comments? Can I have a motion to adjourn? We usually a race for that one. Mr. Garza, second of my Mr. <laughs> 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 and we're adjourned. <laughs>